chairmanship today and I congratulate my colleague, the Honourable Member for Cardiff South and Penarth for securing this debate. It comes on the back of extensive media coverage over the last three weeks about Lynx House in my constituency and prior to that the G4S accommodation contract in my Honourable Friend's constituency of Middlesbrough. And the coverage initially centred on Clear Springs policy of requiring people at Lynx House to wear wristbands in order to access food, which made them identifiable to the public as asylum seekers, and some of them suffered abuse and threats as a result of having to wear those wristbands. This was then followed by um, reports of overcrowding, unsafe and unsanitary conditions at Lynx House. And there's further coverage in The Guardian today about the likelihood of prohibition notices being served by Cardiff Council on Clear Springs and partial closure of Lynx House following an inspection last week that was prompted by concerns raised by South Wales Fire Service. And I want to make my contribution today um, based from two perspe perspectives. Firstly, as the constituency MP where Lynx House is situated, but secondly, from the wider perspective of growing concern at the inadequacies at best and pop pop possibly incompetence at worst of the management of taxpayer-funded contracts, which are extremely lucrative for the private contractors who have them. I have a number of questions for the Minister, and I hope he'll be able to answer them when he responds, but if he's not able to do that today, I would ask that he writes to me following the debate, as I'm yet to receive a reply to my letter of the 1st of February, where I raised some urgent issues about Lynx House. The story about Lynx House broke on the 24th of January about the wristbands and I immediately contacted Clear Springs during that afternoon and spoke to the operations director to raise my concerns. We had a conversation in which he readily accepted my view that the policy was inappropriate and agreed that it would be withdrawn. I also asked him to implement an alternative system such as photo ID cards that people could use for food and he confirmed that a pilot was underway and they would um, implement that pilot fully within the next few weeks. That was subsequently confirmed in a statement on the 25th of January. The Home Office had declined to comment at all on the issue and I wrote to the Minister the same day outlining, outlining my concerns and I asked him 10 questions about Lynx House in that letter. I have had a response for which I'm very grateful on the 5th of February but it hasn't answered all of my questions. The policy had been implemented in May 2015. The Minister's letter makes clear that his department were aware of complaints about the policy in, the, in um, Lynx House as long ago as October 2015. And between May 2015 and uh, January 2016, there were eight inspections carried out at, at um, Lynx House by Home Office compliance officers, but nothing was done about the wristbands. So it took an expose in The Guardian and a call from me on a Sunday afternoon to have that policy withdrawn. I have asked for the inspection reports to be published. I've not heard from the Minister about that and I repeat my request today. And I've also asked what improvements the Minister is making to the inspection monitoring regime for the private companies that the Department has contracts with. But again, I have not received a response to that. There have subsequently been allegations about unsafe conditions, unsanitary conditions, overcrowding with up to 11 people having to share a small room. And the Home Office inspected Lynx House on the 27th and 28th of January. Subsequently, people have been moved out of Lynx House to a local budget hotel in the constituency and some to London. I was told by Clear Springs that this was in order for some painting and decorating to take place. It would seem that it's much more than that as a result of the probable prohibition orders. I don't know if the Minister has seen today's Guardian report about the prohibition notices, but I know that from reports to me another 30 people have been moved out to South Hall and to accommodation near Gatwick. I visited Lynx House in November. I'd been um, told about some concerns, concerns about safeguarding issues there, and I was reassured when I went to Lynx House that those safeguarding issues had been dealt with. But I was told by the managers there that the numbers of people being sent to Lynx House were, and I quote, crazy at the moment, unquote. Lots of single men had been sent through by the Home Office. Um, these are individuals who have gone through a lot to get to Cardiff. Many were injured. There were cases of scabies. Um, I was told that 397 people were at Lynx House that week, the biggest number ever, and, I quote again, well over double the amount that we are here for and can manage properly. It is a crisis. Yesterday, I listened to the Minister's evidence to the Home Affairs Select Committee and to that of Mandy Campbell, his Director of um, Immigration Enforcement, about the inspection re regime and the KPIs that are discussed at monthly management boards. 
Can I suggest to the Minister that this structure does not seem to be working and would he please address improvements to the inspection regime? Jim Shannon, 